Hello, party people. It is Will Pemble. I am in the shop today. It's cold outside, so I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get some stuff done indoors today. Last time we left off, we had built our awesome, our awesome channel for the chain lift. Here's our lift hill. It's kind of sideways in the garage right now. What I want to do now is I want to take this sprocket right here, and this is going to be the sprocket that sits at the very top of the lift hill. I have to build a little frame that grabs onto the underside and the sprocket will go right around that. And so I'm going to drill some holes and stuff and chop some stuff up and weld some stuff and see if I can get this put together. And it's late in the day. I, I, I started a little late, but so try to forgive me and I'll see how much I can get done. Any way it goes, I'm going to put up this video. So, so I'm going to get started right away. So here's what I've got. I've got these two 20 inch pieces of square tube steel. Again, this is the really thick 11 gauge steel. So that's almost an eighth of an inch wall thickness. So it's really heavy, it's really thick, it's really good for holding something important like the whole chain lift system. And what's gonna happen is these are gonna go from one rail to the next. I'll show you in a second how that's gonna end up looking. Um, and then underneath that, I'm just going to weld a six inch piece underneath that and then what will happen is through that will go an axle through this through this part here will go an axle and then sitting between two of these will be the sprocket system so you kind of get an idea of how that's going to look and then what will end up happening is the sprocket will rest just below the level of the track so that the, when the chain goes up and over the sprocket, the sprocket never touches the chain dog and, uh, and nothing ever gets tangled up. And so that's, we want it kind of as close to the track as we can get it, but we don't want it to get tangled up in the track. I like to clamp the heck out of things when I'm, when I'm working with a drill press and metal and things that could, that could catch and turn loose and uh, so I like to be real real careful and just just clamp the heck out of it and I also like to use a little bit of cutting oil when I drill through especially thick pieces of metal wide holes through thick pieces of metal I just want things as as smooth and fluid as they can possibly be you know I should show you sometime how to sharpen a drill bit because I know how to do that and I, it saved me like jillions of dollars on uh, on drill bits so I'll, I'll show you how to do that sometime Okay, so again, I've got this piece goes through and through, right? And this piece only goes into one side. And so what happens is when I put this whole dealy bob together, I can install my axle through this hole and into this one, and then it'll stop at the end here, right? And then that way, I've got a place where my sprocket can turn. It's not gonna come out this end, and then I can screw a cap onto the end here so that the axle won't come out. So it's kind of a nice, real simple, uh, practical way to attach the axle to the system and make it such that it's removable as well. So now I gotta weld these bits and pieces together because what I wanna end up with, like I said, is I wanna end up with something that kinda looks like that and then that'll go up underneath the ties on the track. So let's get going with that next. Now I've got to figure out where I want my sprocket to go. I know that there is 20 inches between here and here, so I know that my metal, my metal piece here, this is 20 inches long and it goes like that, right? And now I've got to figure out where I want my sprocket to go in relation to the end of my channel. So if I think to myself, I'd probably want it to go right about there, right? And it's kind of a subjective thing for me, and I'm sure you could do some math, but if, but if it kind of follows the arc naturally, I'd probably want it to go, I don't know, I think, I think right about there. So then what I'll do is just holding this where I found it, I'm gonna put my finger here, and I'm gonna mark this area, 
And lo and behold, it's just about right in the middle of my track. Because I'm a big baby and it's cold outside, I'm gonna do all of this inside. <laughs> um, so what I've got now is I measured all of my pieces here. I've measured off the middle of this bar and then I've measured off six inches because this is a six inch piece. And so that kind of is gonna go like that and get welded in place. And same thing with the other one. And I'm gonna weld that one like that. And then they'll go together and everything will be hunky dory. Okay, that's one. I've just got it tacked in place here. I'm gonna I'm gonna seriously weld it later after I'm absolutely certain that it's that it's what I need it to be. Welding wire is like salt. You can always add more. It's kind of hard to take away. Now all I need to do is cut my axle to size and tack the whole thing onto the top of the track and then we will have our top sprocket done. Okay, got these. Got those later. So I decided to make the axle for the sprocket eight inches long. No reason why. Uh, I mean, I could think up some reasons, but I just like my intuition said, make it eight inches long. So now we take the sprocket and we put it on the axle. And then what'll happen is we'll have this one go like so. The other one will go under here like so. The axle will go through them, right? The axle will go through them, the sprocket, and then we'll get it all squared up and make sure that it's perfect, clamp it in place, tack weld it in, and then we will have the top sprocket done! I'm gonna stick around here for a couple of minutes and see if anything down there catches fire. Smoky and I can't touch it too much. 
but I got to show you. Okay, important to remember, this is just tacked together. It's not smooth. It's not perfect. I got a whole lot of shoring up. And I think I'm even going to, uh, I'm going to do like belt and suspenders on this one. So I'm going to use fasteners and welds when it's all said and done here. But I want to show you what I got so far because I kind of got the, the basics of it. So I have my axle that goes through here, right? It goes through both sides of this bar and then it only goes through one side of that bar, right? One side of that bar because, wait for it, look, it's so beautiful and smooth against there. So what I can do is I can just make a little cap on the end here and screw in with a screw here and a screw here and a cap over it. That way I can take off one screw and the cap will drop down and then I can remove the axle if I need to and it'll stay in there nice and strong. And that's how that works. So now it'll come up the sprocket, over the channel, right? And down the, and down the way there. So that's kind of cool, right? That's the top part of it. This is a crazy difficult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're making it up as you go. So that's kind of where we're at for the day. I'm going to go get a piece of chain and just pull a piece of chain over it so that we can see that because, you know, that's, that's my favorite part. I'll be right back. Okay, so here comes our chain, right? It goes over our beautiful sprocket up top here. And then the motor is down at the bottom. The motor just pulls it along, right? So that's the top part of the top part of the chain right now. I will see you next time and we'll do the bottom part which is the motor and then we'll get to see it actually go. Thank you for helping me bring physics, family and fun to kids everywhere. We'll see you soon.